Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and a few weeks back I did a video called Why Choose Godot, where I went through why you might want to choose the Godot game engine for developing your games, looking at the particular strengths of that engine relative to Unreal or Unity. Well today we're going to do the exact same thing, except for for the Unreal game engine. Uh, so we're going to focus on the reasons why you would choose to use Unreal Engine relative to the other game engines on the market. We're only looking at the strengths in these videos, we may cover the why not in a different video series at some point down the road. So without further ado, let's just jump right in. It's the AAA game engine. So if you're setting out to make a AAA game, this is the one that has by far and away made the most AAA games out there. Now, if you're just creating indie titles, this may not mean much to you, other than it does prove what the engine is capable of doing. Now, Unity has made some higher profile or profit games, things like Genshin Impact, uh, but in terms of the AAA traditional space, things like cross-platform console, huge budget games, this is an area where Unreal Engine really shines. So you've got uh, some of the AAA games, Deep Breath here, include the Arkham series of Batman games, the Bioshock series, the Borderlands series, Dishonored, Devil May Cry, Dragon Ball Fighters, or Kakarot, Fortnite, uh, Gears of War, Hogwarts Legacy, Lineage 2, Mass Effect series, the Mortal Kombat series, PUBG, Rocket League, Sea of Thieves, the various Tom Clancy, Splinter Cell, and Rainbow Six games, the variety of Xbox games, etc. The whole uh, ecosystem of AAA games, it is staggering how many of them were actually created using Unreal Engine, including a lot of the things we've had announced, such as the fact that CD Projekt Red are switching to Unreal Engine for their future titles. They literally have hundreds and hundreds hundreds of A plus level games uh, shipped and that pedigree is definitely useful. Dog fooding. Now this one is a, an old term. I first heard about it back when Microsoft started dog fooding their own products. Basically, they use the product they're developing in developing of products. When someone actually uses something in production, when they use their own product, you know that they're going to encounter the pain points that you as a developer are going to encounter using their products as well. Now Unity was going to do this with their Gagaya project, and then ironically, uh, it was hard, so they didn't which is kind of the entire point of dog fooding. Well, this is one of the things that uh, Epic Games do incredibly well with Unreal Engine. Uh, the features that are developed for Unreal Engine are often features they use and need for Fortnite. So a feature will go live in Fortnite shortly after it is shipped for production in Unreal Engine. That means that you, you know, it doesn't mean it's going to be bug free or anything like that. Trust me, very much not the case. But you know that you can rely on it because this is a feature that was immediately used in a huge, and, and let's, let's not kid ourselves, Fortnite is a gigantic uh, test bed for projects, uh, and if it works in Fortnite, it will probably work in your game. That's one of the things that uh, Epic Games definitely shines at. Again, it is called dog fooding, and it's just simply using your own software. Now, I've long said that Unity needs to do this. They, they need to actually start focusing on features developers need, and they do that by developing a game themselves. Sadly, uh, someone at Unity seems to disagree with me on this, but at Epic Games, they definitely use their own product, and we all benefit as a result. Pricing. Now, this is definitely an area where Unreal Engine shines. Uh, it's not free, for sure, but for many developers, it might as well be. Until you've earned uh, your lifetime gross revenue exceeds 1 million USD, you pay literally nothing. Once you have made a million dollars in gross revenue, uh, you owe a 5% royalty on all earnings after that first million dollars. So that first million dollars is yours to do with whatever you like. And beyond that, you do have that 5% royalty. Now, there are some other areas where there's licensing. There's... Uh, uh, if you're using it in a, say, architecture firm or for not games, there's different licensing in that regard. Also, they have the ability to negotiate custom licensing. I imagine that's something like what CD Product Red has done for their future uh, Cyberpunk and Witcher type games, because they know they're going to pay so much money that they're not going to be willing to do that 5% royalty. Also, you may want some uh, special licensing agreement with Epic Games where you get additional support or uh, developer access, etc. Those can all be negotiated. But for the average indie developer, frankly, Unreal Engine is free unless your game is very successful, because I know a lot of uh, indie developers would be quite happy with paying a royalty because it meant they made over $1 million. Now, on top of that, also, if you sell on the Epic Game Store, uh, it voids you for the uh, licensing fee there. So you're just going to pay the 7% royalty on the Epic Games Commission and no engine license on sales there, which is also a nice added perk. 
Source code access. Now, unlike the Godot game engine or O3D or several other open source game engines, Unreal Engine is not an open source project. It is, however, source available with access to like 99.9% .9 of the source code, possibly even 100%. I'm not sure if they have anything uh, that's kind of hidden from us because of necessity. But basically, you can build the entire engine, editor, tool chain, everything yourself. This enables you to fix engine bugs on your own. You can make changes or customize the engine to fit your own needs. Also, you have a large community of developers that are actually committing changes back to the engine. Every time there is a release of Unreal Engine, in the release notes, you will see several people attributed. So it does have sort of the community contributed um, vibe that you'd get with an open source project. Just know it is not open source. You can't just take that source code and do whatever you like with it, but you do have access to the source code. So if you do run into a bug or a problem, you can fix things. The Marketplace. The Unreal Engine Marketplace, I'm not going to lie to you for a second and say it even comes close to approaching Unity's in size, uh, but there's still a huge collection of assets there. So if you need asset scripts, 3D models, extensions, and so on, there are literally tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, assets on the Unreal Engine Marketplace. But where it really shines is in Epic Games' generosity. If you sign up for uh, an Unreal Engine uh, license, you also get a Quixel Megascans license. So this gives you unlimited commercial access as long as you're working in Unreal Engine to the Quixel Mega Scans uh, library of textures, photogrammetry, uh, 3D scans. It's amazing quality stuff. Uh, and there's a huge catalog of textures and 3D objects in there, and you can use them freely in your Unreal Engine game. On top of that, uh, they also do a number of giveaways. If you're a regular game from scratch, you'll know first Tuesday of every month there is generally an Unreal Engine giveaway where they give away at least five assets that are yours to keep forever, so long as you, air quotes, buy them for free that month. There's also a huge collection of assets in the permanently free collection, uh, which you can use... Uh, unlimited amount in your commercial Unreal Engine games, which is very impressive. Blueprints. Now, I know some people out there definitely hate Blueprints, but I'm not one of them. I actually, I think this is an excellent visual programming language. I would actually argue it is the best visual programming language out there for game engines. Uh, it is just so tightly integrated into Unreal Engine, and what it allows you to do is offer a visual and high-level access to the vast majority of the engine, your game logic, etc. So designers and more visually inclined people or just programmers that don't want to program in C++ have this visual alternative. So it allows you to have have the low level code and expose it or extend it using a blueprint and then a designer can work with a visual medium. Uh, there's a ton more built into blueprints. They're basically a uh, prefab or a data container type class as well and they are tightly hooked into the ethos of Unreal Engine and again I think they're great. Platforms. Now, this is the number of uh, platforms or devices that you can run Unreal Engine on, and it, Unreal is basically on par with Unity in this regard. Both have support for pretty much every single platform out there. If a new console is released, both engines will have day one, or often much earlier than that, support for it. If there's a new VR headset or gaming device launched, Unreal will support it. They also get top-level support from the console manufacturers, meaning that code should be well-optimized, uh, should have full support for the entire feature set of the console, etc. So, if supporting the most platforms possible, especially when you're dealing with like consoles, uh, then it's hard to be either Unreal or Unity. Again, they're both pretty much at par in this regard. Graphics. Now, this is probably the party piece for Unreal Engine. Its biggest strength is its rendering capabilities. So you got things built in there, such as Lumen, a real-time global illumination system that allows you to just work with lights, and it takes care of it for you. And on the theme of it takes care of it for you, we also have Nanite, which is an LOD system that allows you to basically deal with unlimited polygon budget objects and let the engine just sort it out for you. It does all the LOD work for you, so you can work with million polygon rocks and have it, you know, render it down to a couple hundred if you're running on a mobile device. Uh, on top of that, of course, the renderer is just highly optimized. Of the uh, three engines we were talking about here, I don't think the other two can hold a candle to the just sheer polygon pushing power of the Unreal game engine. Now, I know that Unity is really trying with their HDRP, programmable pipelines, job systems, etc. But right now, I think that under rendering capabilities, Unreal Engine is just so far ahead in that regard. And also another big part of graphics and things looking good is the asset pipeline. So it's very easily integrated with your DCC tool of choice. So if you're working with Max, Maya, Blender, or Houdini, you're gonna generally find that what you send in looks like what you actually created. Also makes Unreal Engine an excellent tool for artists uh, to show off their real-time portfolio because your work generally looks like your work as you create it. And a good graphics pipeline on top of a great renderer it just gives Unreal Engine a, a huge lead when it comes to graphics. 
Of course, this is all just skimming the surface. Unreal Engine has an astonishing number of tools, including for animation, real-time cinematography stuff, networking code that actually works, uh, and it's baked in at the lowest level. We've got audio tools in there, a UI library, world-building tools such as World Partition, and now this new procedural asset stuff announced in Unreal Engine 5.2. We've got landscape and train tools, Niagara Particle Systems, the Chaos Physics and Destruction System, and much more. There's just a ton of functionality in Unreal Engine. I think for feature-wise, Unreal and Unity are probably close to parity, and generally they have all of the tools that you need out of the box. And what you're missing, you can generally make up those gaps on the Unreal Engine marketplace. We're absolutely spoiled for choice these days. And this video was, again, all about why you would choose Unreal Engine. Now, I did gloss over reasons why you wouldn't choose Unreal Engine. Uh, and perhaps, again, I will cover those at a future point. I'm also going to cover Unity at some point in the future. Let me know what you think of this video format. Did I miss any major points? If so, let me know them in the comments down below. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen, why you should choose Unreal Engine. All right, that's it. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.